Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about these guys. Full spectrum bulbs or just your standard size grow light. This time of year is really exciting because we're getting our crops started out, but many are going to need an indoor beginning before they're ready to go outside. You might find you quickly run out of indoor space, especially south facing windows. Recently, I've been utilizing some spare desk lamps to provide some supplemental light. It's a cheap option and easy to pack away for a small space. Well, I started by just using any LED bulb I had available. I got to wondering if a full spectrum bulb would provide any additional benefit. This is marketed as a full spectrum bulb and according to the packaging, it's going to do wonders for my plants. The catch here is that it runs at about two to four times the cost of just your standard LED light. I'll be starting tomato seedlings under both lights and comparing which ones develop better and stronger over a six week or so period. I'll show you the updates along the way so then you can decide whether it's worth the extra money for something like this or you just use what you've got kicking around. Well, let's get to planting then and see how these guys do. They really don't give you much in a pack, do they? <laughs> well, it'll be enough for our purposes at any rate. All right, there we go. That's all for now. I'll get them watered, I'll let them germinate, and then I will keep you updated as they progress from here. So we have our seedlings sprouted here. I've thinned out the less good looking ones and so we're left with just the strongest in each pot. I'll be getting them under their respective grow lights and I'll be dividing them in half. And so four under the household bulb, the other four under the grow light. Here you can see the setup where the seedlings will be for the coming weeks. On the left hand side, we've got our household bulb and the right hand side, the grow light. You'll notice there's a fairly big color temperature difference between the two. I've taken care to position the lights at the same height as each other. And in this location, they will receive the same amount of ambient light. Here's a two week update from after initially placing the seedlings under their respective lights. Again, we've got the household bulb on the left with the grow light on the right. I've raised the lights a little in the meantime to accommodate the larger growth. The progress has been good, and at the moment I'm finding it pretty hard to see a significant difference between either of them. Perhaps there is a slight advantage to team grow light, but I'd say it's not by very much. Here we are on week four from when the seedlings initially went under the lights. Please excuse the Jenga tower that I'm using to prop up both of the lights. My belief is to utilize what we have available to us. And so while it may certainly not be very pretty, it's allowing me to keep the lights at a similar height to each other and level up with the plants as they grow. In terms of growth, again, I'm seeing that both teams are looking very similar and in sync with each other. So here's our six week update. Both teams are looking quite big and you can probably see they are starting to crowd around their respective light sources. I've again had to expand my Jenga tower to accommodate their additional height. At this point, I think it's sensible to end the experiment as the plants are going to be needing more light than I can give them with this current setup. I'll bring them out so they're a little easier to compare and speak more to my findings. Side by side, it's a little bit easier to compare our final results. Now, I would argue that our grow light candidate here does look a little bit more robust and healthy. However, standard household bulb variety still looks really decent and overall I'm quite impressed and happy with both. Both bulbs definitely did what I needed them to do, which is just get my plants started. One last thing I wanted to note, if it's not already obvious to you, is 
just the general legginess of the plants. That wasn't something I initially suspected would happen, but now makes perfect sense that I've run through this trial. What it comes down to is that a bulb this size really doesn't produce very much light for something this size, let alone uncrowding four plants around a bulb each. It's the, they were competing with each other quite a bit to get enough light. And of course, that's just going to result in leggy plants. Now with tomatoes, we're lucky. That's quite fixable. You can bury the stem and new roots will form along it. And so I'm not too worried about it long term. However, it's definitely the best practice to have the healthiest, best plants to start with, in my opinion. What it comes down to is a bulb this size, it's definitely going to do the job for getting seeds started. But once you have something like this, you either need to get a bigger setup if you're going to be keeping them indoors or start thinking about hardening them off and getting them outdoors. In the end, both bulbs got the job done, which was to get the seeds started with a bit of an edge towards the grow light. At around four times the cost though, it doesn't necessarily deliver four times a better result. With the plants now at this size, you would really either need a more robust lighting system to keep them growing indoors, or in my case, I'll move them outdoors to a temporary cold frame and slowly start hardening them off prior to getting them into the garden. In terms of getting my plants started, I'm happy with the results of both bulbs. Neither team came out perfect, but Mother Nature is forgiving enough and both will give me decent tomatoes in good time.